So in this video, I'm going to talk about caster angle and kick up and uh, how they affect the behavior of a car. So what caster angle is, is the angle of the axis of rotation of the steering knuckle relative to uh, the vertical. Okay, so I have basically two hinge pins or king pins, one at the top, one at the bottom that the steering knuckle uh, uh, rotates around. Okay, and the angle of those two hinge pins relative to a perfectly vertical perpendicular line relative to the ground, that angle is the caster angle. And the kick up angle is the angle of the suspension arms relative to the ground. So you can see here uh, that the suspension arms are not perfectly flat. They actually have a slight inclination angle relative to the ground. Okay, so that's the kick up angle. And this here is the caster angle. So we'll start with kick up. Kick up will affect caster. So if I keep this caster block exactly the same and I just take the suspension arm and I tilt it more and more and more to increase the kick up angle, um, that will also move the caster block as the caster block is attached. It's attached to the suspension arm. So the caster will tend to move with the kick up angle. Okay, so why would I change one and not the other? Kick up uh, has to do with how the car behaves over bumps. So you can imagine as the car is approaching a bump in the track, either, either it's a rut or an actual bump in the surface, okay, um, the car is applying a uh, force to that bump in the forward direction. That means the bump is going to apply a force to the tire in the other direction, equal and opposite uh, reaction, right? So how does that translate into suspension movement? If the arm is perfectly flat and I have a bump that the car is approaching, initially the force is only uh, in the, in the uh, back direction parallel to the suspension arm. That means if I have a low kick up angle, uh, less of the uh, uh, force that the bump applies to the wheel will actually be transmitted through the suspension. So with a low kick up angle, the suspension arm is uh, less prone to compressing as it rides over that bump. Okay. With a higher kick up angle, then there's a, 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 a fraction of the force that the car experiences going over that bump that actually gets applied through this angled arm towards the shock. Okay, so if you're riding on a bumpy track, uh, you would tend to want to run a higher kick up angle so that the car can more effectively absorb the bumps. If you're running on a perfectly smooth track, like a carpet surface or uh, something like that, where there's no ruts or anything, then a lower kick up angle is fine. Uh, the, the, you, there's no problem running a low kick up angle. Okay, uh, now, there's another thing to consider with kick up angle as far as the effect of kick up angle on suspension movement, and that has to do with the length of the suspension arm. Okay, so you have a force that's applied to this wheel as it approaches a bump and that gets transmitted through the arm. Well, if the arm is very short, then the arm has a small amount of leverage over the shock, and that means for the same uh, bump to be transmitted through the suspension, I need a larger kick up angle than if I have a long suspension arm, okay, and the wheel is way out here, and so the wheel has more leverage over the suspension, I can use a smaller kick up angle to transmit the same total force through the shock, okay? So you'll see with modern RC cars relative to older cars, older cars tend to have uh, narrower suspension arms and wider chassis. As a result of that, they would need to run a higher kick up angle uh, to get the same bumpy track performance as a modern car which can run a lower kick up angle because it has wider arms okay so that's what kick up does now <clears throat> with caster uh, caster has all, all to do with cornering and uh, what happens uh, to corner entry and mid corner steering so basically caster will change the uh, the axis of rotation of the steering knuckle, as I mentioned earlier. So you can imagine if I have zero caster, 
Okay, so that means my uh, hinge pins or my king pins are perfectly vertical inside the steering knuckle. That means the wheel is going to turn like this, okay, around that axis of rotation. And as the wheel turns, there's really nothing special going on, right? I have a full contact patch between the tire and the ground. And with this vertical axis of rotation, the wheel just rotates around that axis, okay? But let's suppose I had a caster angle that I applied to the suspension. So let's imagine this line here inside the wheel represents my axis of rotation, okay? So if it's vertical, I have zero caster, and the wheel's just rotating like this. If I increase the caster angle, okay? So I'll do it actually this way. So the caster angle uh, is say, I don't know, 30 degrees or so. Now, instead of uh, the steering knuckle and therefore the wheel rotating vertically like this, it actually rotates along an angled uh, axis of rotation. And what ends up happening is if I move it this way and I move this back, uh, the at full steering, as you rotate around that angled axis of rotation, the wheel actually cambers over a little bit. Okay, so uh, what ends up happening is with a higher caster angle at full steering lock, you don't actually have full contact of the tire to the track surface because there's a little bit of, you could call it a camber gain as a function of steering movement with higher caster, okay? And what ends up happening is the more caster I have uh, as the car is negotiating a corner, uh, particularly mid corner where there's weight transfer to the outside wheel, that means the car is going to lean towards the outside. And so if I have more caster, I'm basically getting more dynamic camber as a function of steering, and that allows me to maintain a full contact patch when the car is cornering under a full cornering load, okay? So it's, it's similar to camber gain, but not quite, okay? Because you are changing the camber at zero steering input versus full steering input, it's, it's dynamic, okay? So other things that affect corner entry uh, steering is Ackerman. I have a separate video describing Ackerman. And the, the reason, the difference between what Ackerman does and what Caster does is that Ackerman affects the way a car uh, steers when there is uh, little to zero left to, white, to right uh, weight transfer. So in a low speed turn, uh, Ackerman would have a significant, a more significant effect than caster. In a high speed turn or a turn where there's a lot of lateral load being applied, then caster makes a bigger difference because that's basically adding a little bit of camber uh, to the outside wheel, which allows the chassis to roll and then you, you recover a full contact patch to the outside tire that's cornering under that cornering load, okay? So <clears throat> what you might, uh, uh, okay, so that's what caster does. And if you're going to change caster, if you think about what happens to this steering knuckle, if I you know, magically had another caster block that allowed me to increase the caster even more so that I can have more mid-corner steering, uh, then you'll, you'll notice that this whole steering uh, knuckle would rotate this way, okay? It would, it, would, it would exist at a higher angle. That means that the steering uh, link ball stud here would be pushed down. And if I did that, I would end up with more bump steer. So if you, in some uh, manuals for your RC cars, uh, they will rightly tell you that if you change the caster angle, you also have to change the number of spacers under your steering link ball stud. Because if, uh, if I want the same amount of bump steer as I modulate my caster angle, I'm also moving the Z position of this outer ball stud here. And so I have to compensate for that and bring it back to its original position by adding or subtracting spacers under that ball stud, okay? So a high caster angle will give you more mid corner steering and a low caster angle will give you more corner entry steering uh, it will also make the car very twitchy. It'll make it rather uh, unstable uh, on straights. Okay, so as the car is going down a, a fast straightaway, small steering inputs will make the car steer very aggressively if you have a low caster angle. And mid-corner, 
it won't have as much steering as what you would have with a high caster angle. So a high caster angle gives you more mid-corner steering. It also makes the car a bit more stable going uh, in a straight line. Okay. Um, I think that's all I wanted to mention about caster. Um, there is a, a relationship between caster and trailing axle. I'll do a separate video on trailing axle. Um, but basically we have here, I've covered most of the steering geometry uh, components now. I've covered bump steer, Ackerman, caster, kick up, which also affects your static caster angle. I'll do another video on uh, trailing axle. And I believe that should cover everything for steering geometry. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for now. And thanks for watching.